the real ending of Run Rabbit Run, explained by yours truly. So I don't normally do endings explained, but I thought in this particular case, since I've seen so many misinterpretations of the end, and again, this is my interpretation, but everyone is clearly leaving out a very critical scene. I figured I would go ahead and give my explanation of this movie and show you my photographic evidence as proof. Now, I don't have the video to show you, but I'll explain it as best I can. And first, we're gonna run through some of the improper interpretations, or at least what they're missing. Uh, now, Run Rabbit Run was a movie on Netflix just released. It came out a couple days ago, and it's along the lines of the, you know, uh, t tortured mommy trope, which, you know, somewhere in lines of Baba Duke, which I enjoyed quite a bit. I think Baba Duke maybe is a little bit better, uh, but this was still very good. Australian movie, enjoyed it. So, what you have, just to give a brief plot synopsis, and obviously, if I'm explaining the ending, there's got to be spoilers, uh, but. In fact, they actually give uh, a plot synopsis. But essentially, you have this troubled woman. Uh, she's been... She's divorced. She has a child. And she's she's struggling. She's a fertility doctor. And it's just her and her daughter. Her father passes away. And then she gets you know, very sad about it. And it's then she starts exhibiting... Uh, her daughter starts exhibiting a bizarre behavior... Um, what I would say is that bizarre behavior, there, there's reasons behind the bizarre behavior. Uh, she starts talking about it, her grandmother that she's never met and has questions about her past. Uh, and then this starts to remind her, uh, Sarah, the doctor, whatever she is, uh, about her, her missing sister. So things start to get a little bit weirder and you start, you're supposed to believe that there's a possibility that her deceased sister has somehow possessed the the young daughter now the most important parts of the movie are where you have the the father comes back into the picture and he brings a new girlfriend and they're i guess going to get married and they're going to have a kid she already has a kid but they're planning on having another kid and this really seems to disturb sarah and then Sarah eventually they get they agree to allow Mia the the younger her her daughter to visit the grandmother who, who she's never met. So things start to intensify, and then you start to get, you know get pieces of what happened. And the big twist in the movie towards the end is that uh, Alice Alice, who's the sister who's deceased, a young Sarah locks Alice in the cabinet while they're playing hide and seek when she eventually unlocks the door alice yells at her and starts trying to choke her well sarah grabs a rabbit trap and hits her in the head and then alice starts running away from her she runs uh towards a cliff upon which sarah pushes her off the father was asking where sarah went and and it shows that she's just like she says she doesn't know where she went. She just, she ran off. And what you start to see is her having like this psychological break as to what's going on. And and in no ways, in my mind, is this, this isn't a ghost movie. There is no supernatural in it. Um, and I think the rabbit is, a, is kind of a red herring for like the symbology of the rabbit is really just to trick you into thinking that maybe that's the possessed soul of the sister or what have you. But everybody keeps getting the ending wrong, and I'm going to show you why everyone is wrong, just to give you an idea. So the very ending scene, uh, people are saying there's, there's two theories to it, but both of them, I believe, are, are wrong, right? Uh, the first sequence... They're, they're implying that that either she's broken with reality and these are all just hallucinations and it's all just mental health or there's a ghost and both of those interpretations are wrong um so what they're saying is alice could be a ghost possessing mean, that's that's the one where they and that's what they're trying to get you to think I, I don't believe that they're even saying that run rabbit run is advertised as a thriller not a paranormal and they don't talk about ghosts at ever at any point 
What I do think though is going on is that Sarah is starting to starting to lose grips with reality and she's actually becoming psychotic and in fact does lose her mind because she begins to hurt her child. Even though they're showed as hallucinations, I suspect what really ends up happening in the end is when she notices there's this ending scene where she's trying to find where Mia went. And before that happens, the, the father comes home. Or he comes to the, the house that they grew up in. So Sarah goes back to this place of trauma. And things get real bad there where she starts hurting her daughter and things escalate to the point where Mia feels the need to run away. Right, So then the father comes home and he looks at the house and everything's smashed up, everything's disheveled. Things like there's broken glass everywhere. There's things going on. Now you have to remember that the father has moved on with someone else. He is going to start a new family. And when he comes back, he also finds that Sarah is laying on the floor scribbling these black squares. And he says to Sarah, uh, you know, they told me because they have a phone conversation. Sarah finds out that the dad is the one who explained everything to Mia. Mia's been talking about the dead sister because that's what was explained to, to Mia. So the father is the one who planted the seed in the head. Oh, you have a grandmother you've never seen. Oh, you have a you have a, a, an aunt who died. So that's why she's asking all these questions and why she's, she's, you know, the kid's processing it in a different way. But what it's doing is triggering Sarah, the mom, and the mom is starting, she's she's losing her mind. The reason why the father got called was because the school had noticed that on her homework, there were these disturbing images on the back of all of them. Well, it's highly implied, and I think it's pretty evident, that Sarah's the one who's been drawing on the back of her daughter's pictures, because when she gave her a picture to draw and looks on the back, there's nothing on it. And then when the father comes into the house all smashed up, he sees there's a square he, she's drawing a square. So what I think ended up happening is when they, they, and they go down and they rescue the daughter, she's hiding, right? Um, and they find her in a thicket where they, they think that she's, she's, you know, hiding from her mom or whatever she's hiding for. Well, at the very, very end of the movie, there's this shot. And this is the one that I would like to show you guys. Let me bring it up here. This shot is the one that everyone's not talking about. And when I see different interpretations, they're missing it. So Sarah wakes up. She expects Mia to be next to her. She's not there. And then she looks over, she gets out of bed to find Sarah, or I mean, find Mia. And she looks down at that bed impassively and, and doesn't move on. If you notice, his head is covered and part of his leg is covered. Uh, what happened is, and, and I couldn't find this clip anywhere, so sorry for the fidelity, but I had to take a picture of my TV to get this picture. What's happening here is, is Sarah, and she just looks down at the body and moves on because that's the father. He's dead. She killed him. And what we're, and at this point, I suspect that Mia is already dead as well, and she was pushed off the cliff. And when the father came home, she hit him with the rabbit trap it probably killed him but because she still loves him she covered his head because she didn't want to see what she did to him so what what i think and this is again my interpretation one of the final shots in the movie is of the two girls walking hand in hand and you don't know if it's a reflection you don't really know what's going on and they're saying like oh it's it's we have to we have to what's the interpretation as to what happened you see the two girls walking hand in hand. Well, I, I'm 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 telling you that she already, the the daughter is is dead, and that is is the mom Sarah, re like that's her what she envisions happen is oh she's with my daughter now. So let's see. There's the picture right there. The two of them walking hand in hand, and she looks back, and then they continue walking off. She's already dead. She's already in, they've, the woman's already had a psychotic break. She's already lost everything. The, the father is dead. So I just figure you guys needed to see what I'm saying. So that way you know how this all works. Because I think that's my interpretation. And I think this one image, again, no one's been talking about it. And I, I'm pretty sure I'm right. And I don't usually do these explanations 
Maybe you guys would like to see me do more because clearly the critics are missing it. They're not seeing this last image here. Um, but I think I've got it nailed and they just, they seem to gloss over it because I think it's very clear that the, the woman's had a clear psychotic break and killed her entire family because she, at one point, the mother, when she goes to visit her mother in the convalescent home, the mother screams that the child is hers and she's like, no, you can't take her from me. And so I think somewhere in her brain, she thinks like she's going to lose her child. She has to kill her to keep her just like the, the husband left her for another woman got to keep got to kill him so what do you guys think do you think i'm right do you think i'm wrong let me know do you want me to do more of these explains uh, it's up to you i think i've got a pretty good handle on explaining things as a professional reviewer here from our reviews will kill you take a look see what you think i think it's a good movie i enjoyed it it's not the greatest movie in the world but a lot of people are talking about it and i think they've got the interpretation wrong that's at least two different articles I read of the wrong explanation and, and a couple of YouTube videos. So I figured I'd throw mine in the in the pitch there. Make sure you check our full-length audio podcast. We do movie reviews. We do giveaways, news, all that great stuff. It's on iTunes, Stitcher, Spotify, all those great places and more. Check out the rest of what we got. We really appreciate it. Like, share, comment below. You got to fight the algorithm. You need those thumbs up. But as for myself, I guess I'm on to the next one.